Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Star Sound Speaks. This is your host, Irliana Samsara of Star Sound Astrology. And today I'm going to talk about the coming full moon in Pisces. This is a very big, big event. Things are about to get real. Things are about to get really real. This is maybe one of the most powerful new moons of the year. I'm going to explain all about it, the features of it, and then we will talk about the what it means for us on a personal level. And then we're going to move into the collective, and especially with an eye on Florida. This is an enormous, not just because of what we're reading in the news, it has to do with the chart of Florida, all of it. So we're going to cover those things. And we also, then I'll finish by giving us, you know, where we can get help, where, what is going to assist us and um, give us the uh, empowerment that we, we really need. So, all right. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Erliana and I do Western tropical astrology and it is traditional astrology or Hellenistic astrology blended with modern archetype. And I use whole sign houses. If you're new to the channel, welcome. And if you've just recently joined and subscribed, we're so, so grateful. We're so grateful to have you here. And if you do like and enjoy this content and get something out of it, we would love it if you would subscribe, share the content. We love hearing from you too, the comments below. I'm going to share something later at the end of the podcast. It's, and uh, I'm going to put the link below. And it, I, I would love to hear your uh, feelings on it. It's a Maui elder speaking about the Maui situation, the fires in Maui. But anyway, before we get into that, let's get started with this, dive into this new moon. So this new moon is, sorry, new moon, I think, I can't sleep, I had too much chocolate. Anyway, um, this full moon in Pisces is a super moon. It's a blue moon, which means there's more than, when you have more than one, two full moons in a month, it's called a blue moon. But the really important thing here is the fact that it's a super moon. And that means that the moon is at perigee. Perigee means it is the closest to the earth. So when the moon, obviously when the full moon is a perigee full moon, it means that you've got really high tides, like super, super high. And of course, we've got this hurricane approaching Florida as we speak. So this new, this uh, full moon is going to be at seven degrees Pisces, 25 minutes. And it is going to occur 9.38 p.m. on Wednesday, the 30th Eastern Daylight Time. Adjust your calendars accordingly. Um, you, of course, we're all going to feel this one. There's a big significance here. But if you, especially if you have planets at 4 to 10 degrees of mutable signs, so that would be Gemini, Sag, Virgo, or Pisces, you will definitely have, you have planets in those contact points you'll definitely feel it. So let's first talk about the personal. This, the biggest um, important feature of this is that it is conjunct the Saturn. So it's not only a super full moon in a water sign, in the oceanic sign of Pisces, it is also conjunct Saturn. So on a personal level, let's just talk for about that for a few minutes. Um, this is definitely addressing old karmic patterns. This has an enormous capacity to, it's the buildup point, right? We had our, we had the new moon in Virgo and then the opposite sign being Pisces. So th this is going to bring up a lot of emotions as new moons, uh, full moons always do. Full moons in Pisces is our Kleenex moon. But this one is especially profound and especially sobering. It's a big sobering wake-up call. It speaks to many things. So I'm going to give you some facets of this. Number one, addressing old karmic patterns, um, old emotional wounds, emotional wounding, ancestral karma, definitely figuring largely in this. Ancestors, um, parents, grandparents, family dynamics, dysfunctional, toxic subconscious patterns, things, addictions, traumas, codependencies, ways of being that we have tried to hide or mask and run from. This would be a really potent opportunity to address these things, to have, it, it's, it's, it can give us the opportunity to have this incredible transcendence, um, forgiveness, compassion, forgiveness for ourselves, incorporating that into our healing because the moon the when the new moon is in virgo 
as it occurred two weeks ago, of course, Virgo is about cleansing, purification, and our health. Well, but this is actually the, the when the moon comes around in Pisces, it's like, yes, we, we have to be very um, efficient and discerning on dealing with and getting getting our health handled, but we have to also remember to incorporate feelings, emotions, and that is also part of our healing. So this, con this conversation extends in many different facets, but I would say for sure, end of deception, not kidding ourselves anymore, really taking care of ourselves, really incorporating that, that aspect of the emotions and our intuition into the bigger picture into our healing journey and on a personal level i would say it's also about having a hard a really honest a really sobering honest conversation with ourselves around and a reality check around these old patterns that we may have known that like skeletons in the closet that we haven't wanted to deal with we want to escape from them, right? Pisces can be about deception and being in la la land and wanting to escape from pain. But this is a for true healing to occur, we have to look at that shadow. So the grace of the Saturn conjunct in the in the full moon is that it can bring these things up. Um, you know, some of the questions I, I wrote here is like, you know, how long do you want to hang on to hurt? Um, how long do you want to play victim and not be in your power? Um, what about unconscious behavior, the escapism? What about the karmic cost of hiding out? Because Saturn is also about karma and time and time's up. And so not accepting responsibility, not committing, not ha having accountability. These are all Saturnian themes. The uh, full moon is in the bounds at seven degrees of Pisces. It's in the bounds of Venus. So it's playing by Venus's rules. Well, Venus is still retrograde. She's at her stationary direct point. She's about to go stationary direct on uh, like Sunday, uh, this Sunday. So uh, she's the morning star. She already appeared in the sky, visible in the morning. If you get up before dawn, you see her in the eastern sky. And so this, with her trip through Leo for the past two months, you know, we've been since early July, she, she's been in Leo. Oh, my cat. No, no, do not jump. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> oh, cat. oh, my goodness. Of course, my, one's on the bed, one's running around. It's like, uh, yeah, we, it's definitely full moon time. <laughs> anyway, what were they saying? Yeah. Um, Venus has just come out as morning star. So now she has this, you know, very young energy. It's like getting things done, being bold in the sign of Leo, rediscovering our authentic self, our truly strength in vulnerability, um, being bold, being courageous, being the authentic self, expressing oneself, uh, the joy of connecting powerfully with others. These are some of the themes. And I'll be talking about this more with Michael, um, with Michael Bartlett, um, we're going to be talking about Venus coming out of retrograde and the lessons we learned. So we'll save that for then. But for now, because this full moon is playing by Venus's rules, it has that flavor. It's these are the, some of the themes that we're going to be looking at. So that's maybe about all I want to say about the the, um, the on the personal level. So let's move into the collective. So obviously we've got this storm bearing down on Florida. It's going to be there. It's, as of this chat, it's it's category two, possibly category three. So clearly, whether we live in Florida or not, uh, or we live on a shoreline or, or near a large body of water, like an ocean um, or just a bay or something, whether or not it is going, it definitely has import, certainly about Florida. Why is that? Well, Florida is a Pisces state. And Florida's sun is 13 degrees of Pisces. So this full moon is occurring only six degrees from the sun of Florida. It's applying to the sun. So that's that's important. We also have the opposition from Mercury in retrograde in that opposition um, to the sun. So there is there are there's a lot of tension. You know, you've read, I'm sure, about all the things happening in the news, which I won't get into with, you know, Governor DeSantis and 
the um, you know the criticisms and the things that have levied you know on all sides and all that. But we will say, I want to take it from a perspective of reality check with property. Saturn rules real estate. Saturn rules real estate. Well, <laughs> Saturn and Pisces, we have to get real about real estate shorelines. Saturn and Pisces is about peninsulas, oceanfront property, waterfront property, borders, shore, the shore, the, the rising oceans. This is a, a huge conversation, especially now that Saturn has gone into the sign of Pisces as of last um, March, it's retrograding and it's at three degrees. It's only four degrees from this full moon. It's going to go back to zero degrees, which is a critical degree. And that'll be in November. It'll stop at zero, turn around and begin its journey all over again. So we've had a taste of Saturn and Pisces, but it's bringing us back to that critical point. There are definitely choices that we all need to make as a society and to stop um, the deception or the need to not think about having these hard conversations. You know, Saturn is the hard conversation and it's about growing up too. So if we've been in fantasy land, if we have had ocean from property and we've been like, oh, I can't get rid of, it. oh, it's my family, my ancestral land. And, you know, this could be a very big theme right now with the full moon and in the sign of Pisces near that conjunction. Um, and, and certainly very loud if you're a Floridian it, with it being so close to the Florida sun. Um, but this is these are important conversations, the sobering reality of rising seas. If you know that you probably shouldn't be living where you're living because of these things or wherever you are living, especially though with my Florida, like you think of South Florida in Miami, there were certain neighborhoods which for years to go out and get your mail down the driveway, people have to put on little ankle rubber boots because the water floods at high tide. It's king tides, perigee, you name it, you know, six inches of water. Not a good plan, right? If you know you're supposed to be moving and you're not moving, this full moon and certainly this hurricane coming storm um, is is really going to be maybe it'll be the final wake up call to to do something if you know in your heart you should be somewhere else this is when you really have to honor that and have that hard conversation with yourself um, watch where the moon is going to be on Thursday the storm is supposed to be at its uh, hit uh, at its worst on Wednesday uh, the new moon will be uh, sorry you <laughs> know forgive me I always do that the full moon will be in late um, on Florida time, it will be 9.35 p.m. But I want you to watch where the moon is on Thursday when it hits 13 degrees of Pisces, because that's where Saturn is going to be next March, March 24th. So it'll be right in time for eclipse season. Saturn's going to be there. So it's like time to pay the piper, right? We're getting kind of like this preview of what we're going to have to deal with three times next year we're going to deal with this and it could be evacuation karma the karma of not evacuating um and and the price of, that we pay right every choice has a cost everything has a cost everything is a benefit so this is where we look at all that but next march 26th october 26th of next year and december 5th saturn will be at 13 pisces for each of those times. So it'll be direct March 26th, it'll be retrograde October 26th, and it'll be direct on December 5th. I'm almost sure about that. The important thing is that these dates uh, are really, um, definitely write these down. <laughs> now, I was look, looking back in history of like, what happened during those times in the past, when in past cycles? Well, Saturn was at those degrees in 1965 and 66. So you think about the great real estate boom, where everybody was moving to Florida in droves in the 50s and 60s. So Saturn over that point um, gave, you know, was this huge uh, real estate boom. Um, but also difficulties and, and constrictions with hurricanes. Um, there was a great uh, tornado that is called the Great Miami Tornado that happened when the chart of uh, Florida was activated. 
um, was there was a great Miami tornado and a great hurricane, Miami hurricane of 1927. Um, so we're looking at these things. Now that wasn't Saturn sitting on the sun, but it was Uranus <laughs> up there <laughs> doing its thing in, in Pisces. So yes, um, a lot. And now Neptune is there, right? So we were talking about catastrophic, 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 bleh, <laughs> catastrophic floods and things of that nature. So yes, extreme weather patterns for sure. We also want to remember that today, this evening, as I um, put this out there to you, Uranus just stationed retrograde in Taurus. And every time, especially when, when a planet stations retrograde in those weeks, or in this case, month with Uranus move, getting to that point and making that turnaround, it's always the most volatile expression. Well, as we know, we've had volatile earth changes with Uranus and Taurus. And of course, it got really bad, all these forest fires, Canada, um, British Columbia, Maui, even the Canary Islands, I mean, the, Pakistan flooding, you know, just, just the enormous, ex intense, extreme things. So it's always the most volatile at the stationary retrograde point. It will go direct in late January. So again, we'll be seeing as it stations, when it stations uh, direct in the end of January, you'll start, you'll start feeling that again, it'll be reminding us, hopefully these times will be where we can get to reflect on the progress we've made around our comfort zone and what values are truly dear to us and which ones are going to progress us and which ones are going to hold us back. So there's that. Okay. Um, I would say too, and no pun intended, but this is like, you know, we have this choice with this full moon. Are you going to stick your head in the sand? or not, I mean, no pun intended, but but really, you know, what, what price are you going to pay if you just continue to ignore the things that you need to look at? It is definitely time to pay the piper. It's time to pay the real estate piper. Um, interestingly enough, I went back in history into the 1500s and when um, there was Neptune was at 13 Pisces, in 1528, in this is like sounds like Jeopardy, right? <laughs> in March of 1528, <laughs> April, <clears throat> excuse me, there was this conquistador named Panfilo de Nar Narvaez. Pardon my Spanish, it sounds like French. Anyway, he is, he was like the most, uh, it was the most god awful trip that he made. He lost he, out of 600 men who left Spain to try to conquer Florida, um, what was, you know, was owned by the Spanish or at least claimed initially by them, as you know from your history, only four people survived a year later. And Narvaez himself um, was, you know, it was just attacks. It was interesting, why am I bringing this up? Because it was the 13 Pisces, where the son of Florida, 300 years later, Florida gets incorporated at that point. So it's interesting because not only was it that point at 13 Pisces, but um, the men, Narvaez and his 600 men, they came ashore uh, in Florida in 1528, and they ended up at the Big Bend, which is exactly where this storm is headed in that area, that crook, the crook of the Florida where the panhandle meets the peninsula. So I just thought that was really interesting. So here it is. Florida had not, it was 300 years away from being made a state, but it's that resonance. It's that resonance that you see of actions and archetypes playing out in consciousness around signs and degrees. And so here is this failed attempt. Um, he was a very, he was this murderous, you know, plundering uh, like they all were, but he was especially ruthless according to history from what little I read about him. But it, it everything around that legacy was forced evacuations, genocide of tribal native peoples, um, you know, his, the hardships of weather, being driven away by tribes, getting enslaved by, by tribes as well, and people captured and deserted and died of, you know, diseasement, and they ended up walking across the panhandle to, to what was then Mexico at that time. 
So you see, there's those, all this stuff about relocation and evacuation karma, we could say, um, all of those themes coming up. So I think with this full moon is we are getting this this kind of glimpse into maybe this is like this, this great, you know, talk about a reset where we get to um, cleanse and purify ourselves and really address these pain points in the collective pain body of humanity, of of native and indigenous peoples being genocided and and even if we are white and colonial you know we had colonialist ancestors you know there there is a there is this the soul can feel like an outsider even if you weren't or aren't from a you know a, a historically marginalized community it's just where we are coming from as a society of we're healing these deep, deep emotional traumas and wounds. So there's that. Um, what I wanted to say too was the um, hurricane, uh, this is not obviously a to take lightly, even though it, they said, oh, it'll only be a category two or, or maybe a three. Even if it shows up as a one, we have to take it seriously. You have to remember, Hurricane Sandy, if you remember that one in late October 2012, that was a perigee full moon, water sign, Scorpio. Water sign, perigee full moon, 13 foot storm surge in Manhattan, flooded the subways. I wasn't living in Manhattan at the time, but my my dad, I remember my dad was dying and he actually died during the hurricane. And I, I, the I couldn't fly up to see him if the, her, you know, the airports were long closed and all that stuff. We had to delay the funeral for two weeks because there were so many refugees um, that were shut out and displaced out of their homes that they went up way into the suburbs where my, my parents lived. And it was something my, my, my mom had passed, but my, my family, uh, some of my family lived up there at the time. And I remember we couldn't get a hotel room because people, the hotel rooms in the area were all taken by people who had been displaced in the lower part of Manhattan and the metro area. So we had to wait two weeks. So that there it is, it, there just goes to show you. And that was just a category two. So you can, but so it, it it's the storm surge that kills, not the the number on the Saffir scale. So the storm surge was thirteen feet. Well, this one's supposed to be eleven feet. It can be as high as eleven feet. I, I'm sure by the time you you see this video, we'll we'll know a lot more. But it's that's the level that Katrina happened at. So Sandy was second only to Katrina in terms of damage. So yes, this is a very powerful full moon, and it's going to bring us a lot of <laughs> sober realization. Okay, so what's the what's the fun in all this? Well, it's not, not exactly fun. Um, I'm going to say something that I've never said before about Uranus and Taurus, but I'll just say it now, because what's coming is we have some, we have a ray of hope. We have a, some interesting uh, Sabian symbol I'm going to share with you, the Chandra symbol, and then something that happened in Maui that gives us some hope. But before I do, I will just say that this in Chinese astrology, the part of Taurus that was 17 to 29 degrees of Taurus was called Ta Ling, which translates as the Great Burial Trench. Isn't that a lovely thought, right? <laughs> yeah. But you could look at that and say, okay, what's being buried? Or what have we buried that needs to be excavated so that we can um, you know, reprogram ourselves. And we can also see it as, um, you know, the, the great, what what comfort zones, when I think of Uranus being in that sign, what comfort zones of ourselves, this desire and attachment to comfort and pleasures, um, material pleasures and things, what part of those are not healthy that are really enslaving us that need to be disposed of? So this is obviously a very strong wake up call for the rest of the time that Uranus is in the sign of Taurus, which is going to be into 2026. This is the theme that we're dealing with. So there's that. Anyway, so where do we get help? Well, the domicile ruler of this full moon, because it's in Pisces, the, the 
traditional ruler Pisces is Jupiter. Well, Jupiter is just about to go retrograde, just right next, ne right near Uranus and Jupiter tag teaming each other, both going <laughs> in, one's already there, the other's going. So this is a great opportunity for, this is the, these next few months is when we really get to revisit on a deep inner planes where we can reflect and contemplate on um, the faith that we have in our own abilities, in our own resources, in our own resourcefulness, in our own resilience. Breaking free from the past, breaking free from old uh, thoughts about self-worth. And there's a part where we can believe that we can reclaim a part of ourselves that have a part of ourself wherever we feel cut off or um, alienated or traumatized whether it's through trauma or just our own internal processes it's about healing that and embodying my right? taurus is about the physical body the senses embodying the change or as who is it gandhi that said you know be the change you wish to see in the world so these few months where Jupiter and Uranus both being retrograde in Venus's domicile is giving us this opportunity. Um, yeah, and I, and I would say too, in terms of the collective, it's also saying, okay, people, we have to de really develop and go in there and contemplate on what will it take to radically reinvent our relationship with nature, with ourselves and nature, and with the earth and what we value. And what is important to us is the luxury house in the gated community, which is very Torian, velvet cushions and a five car garage, you know, um, is, is this really what freedom is about? Or is it, you know, here we, you know, gated off from everybody, electronic gates and this, that, and the other. And of course you can justify that to the hilt. Yeah, I get it. But it's giving us real pause because guess what? A hurricane happens, ain't no electricity. So how long do those gates last? You know, we, we're looking at limits of things. Um, if God forbid the grid goes down, well, it could be out for a long time. So it's forcing us to come into, uh, to look at these things squarely in the face, coming together in community. What will that look like? What will it take? The last thing I want to say is, the um there are two beautiful um the Sa the sabian symbol and the chandra symbol for this full moon the sabian symbol is a um, a girl blowing a bugle so to me that's again speaks to the wake up call um according to dane rudger's interpretations he said it's a call to participation in the service of the race as an evolutionary crisis approaches perfect right just what we've been talking about. And the other one is, um, before I mention it, I'm just saying, watch the link below. There's this, it comes in around five minutes and 35 seconds, but just back it up even a little before that. Props to this man on his YouTube channel. This was a channel that was given to me by one of my friends and it's called Hustle Bitch. The guy called his channel Hustle Hustler or hu not Hustler, Hustle Bitch, what, whatever, you know, <laughs> whatever. But he's, he's a great guy. and He's questioning lots and lots of things, as many, 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 many thousands and millions of people are questioning what has gone on in Maui. Again, this full moon speaks to that as well. But what I what I found was that he he took, it looked like somebody's, I don't know, what, there's no attribution, but it was a, obviously a town hall meeting, it's somebody's iPhone. They had a Maui elder, a woman, a grandmother looking, older woman, a little flower in hair. You can't miss it. You have to watch this. Oh my goodness. I watched this like five times. And every time I watched this little 10 second piece, the hair on my arms stood up. I swear, I've never seen my hair stand up so, like straight. It, 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 I felt like it grew inches and stood up <laughs> listening to her speak. It was like spirit. Spirit was coming down and speaking through her. And she is not having it. All this 
all this shuck and jive and, you know, stuff and maneuvering and um, lack of conversation from authorities and mismanagement and all the stuff that we've been reading about of what went wrong and in Lahaina and Maui. And, you know, here now we are on the heels of Idalia, hurricane or storm Idal Id Idalia. And here it is, you know, again, this opportunity where are where are the authorities? Are they going to come through with us? Or are they going to, you know, with that Saturn there next to the moon, where are the authorities? Are they hiding? <laughs> you know, are they not telling us certain things? Yeah, the opposition with Mercury. It's like, yeah, there's a lot of secrets that are coming up. Where are the details? You know, this is a very, this is a very tenuous time. But this woman, she wasn't having it. And I I I don't even want to say any more than that. Just watch it. Cause I, I, I watched it like six times and every time my, my the hair stands up, but she does this thing with her. Uh, it's like a shamanistic, uh, this gesture that she does. And it is just the whole thing, what she says and how she expresses it is just beautiful. And I feel that she is the voice of the, uh, the zeitgeist the zeitgeist of the spirit of the times of what is occurring now and the consciousness on our planet. So please do watch that. I think you will, I want to hear what you have to say too. What did you think about that? Uh, let me know. Cause I, I love hearing from all of you, as you know, I'll just end up by saying um, the, the other, the Chandra symbol, which is another divinatory, like a tarot symbol for this full moon is called a gypsy peasant woman sings a mournful chant. And I'll read you the little blurb here. The earth is broken. The compact between a human soul and her earth housing is violated. Some of us are sensitive to what has gone wrong and must proclaim a conscience change. An agonizing place to be and yet treated as just the way it is, met with huge resolve almost welcoming that it has come down to this. Creatively expressive of what it feels like to be here in the midst. You feel resonant with all the kingdoms of nature and especially aligned with the soul of this planet in her deep changes. Put in the right place at the right time to call the occasion, to make things unavoidable you feel almost immobilized by how huge the task is. Yet you are stoical, dedicated, exceedingly strong and enduring, able to withstand the shaking loose of the old earth, in here for the duration, just getting going when it all seems lost. And I'll end this chat today by saying that there was something on the news, a woman in, in Lahaina, this news, this man who had grown up in Lahaina, he was a news reporter. They assigned him to the island and he talked to this lady whose house completely burned down, right? Just ashes there. But this statue of Mother Mary that was on her lawn was still standing intact wasn't burned to ash like the concrete of the buildings. And then she felt so good about that. It was like a symbol of hope that, you know, hey, the, and, and certainly with the ancestors, <laughs> the full moon conjunct Saturn and Pisces, the ancestors have our back. They're unseen, but they're there and they're real. That other dimension is as real as this one. And if there's one big fat message to get out of this new moon, full moon <laughs> sorry i keep saying that if there's one big message to to take home with you and carry in your heart all of it's important but that one it's the thing that'll steer us through they've got our back mother mary man mother mary yes kali durga mother mary kuan yin however you want to um, see the divine mother but she's there she's there for us so Let's let's uh, use that, and hopefully these words will empower you. And you know, we're all here to help each other, give us hope. And um, yeah, that's all for today. Just wanted to share that. And uh, anyway, let me know what you think. Um,
appreciate your subscriptions, shares, and comments and all that good stuff. And I will see you very soon coming up with, um, yes, Dan Waits, I have not forgotten. <laughs> Was so much editing mercury retrograde i'm blaming it on and i also will be coming out with the the astrology for september hopefully i will not lose my electricity it doesn't look like i'm in the path but hope and we'll just keep our fingers crossed saying lots of mantras prayers so much love to you all take care everyone early on a samsara star sound speaks star sound astrology namaste <laughs>